Hello everybody, Sanir, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about why CRISPR as an industry could be worth over a trillion dollars. So this video here from Alec Pokran, one of our members of our community, uh, actually he tweeted this video. And of course, this video comes from the interview between Chamat, billionaire, and Lex Freeman, obviously one of the top podcasters in the world right now. And I was actually listening to this podcast episode last night. I just fell asleep, but I did not get to this part, actually. So that's why I want to rewatch wherever I left off. And I think I'll get to that part. But this clip here, I want to play it. I want to play it for you guys uh, because I think there's some value here for us all. So let's go ahead and play it and let's uh, give my two cents on it. You know, we, um, I think, are about to unleash in a world of zero energy and, and zero compute costs computational biology will replace wet chemistry. And when you do that, you will be able to iterate on tools that will be able to solve a lot of human disease. I think like if you look at the head of like the top 400 most recurring rare diseases, I think like half the number, 200, is a specific point mutation as just the mismethylation between C and T. I mean, that's like, whoa, wait, you're telling me in mi billions of lines of code, I forgot a you know, semicolon right there. Mm -hmm. That's causing this whole thing to miscompile. So mm -hmm. I just got to go in there and boop, and it's all done. That's a crazy idea. That was a C++ C, C yeah. throwback for people that don't know what I said. <laughs> There's two people who are clapping. Two people there. there. Everybody yes, else is like, that, what? I mean, this, this is not a pipe. What are you talking makes about? Makes perfect sense. Um, but, but, um, so that couldn't that be a truly a source of a yeah. huge the, the computation biology unlocks? I mean, obviously, medicine is begging for the, the thing with energy, though, is that the um, groundwork is well laid. Um, and talking about sort of like the upper bound is well defined. The upper bound in medicine is not well defined because it is, it is not the sum total of the market cap of the pharma industries, it is actually the sum total of the value of human life. And that's an extremely ethical and moral. Yeah, so this this is a really good video for a couple of reasons, guys. First of all, uh, Chamat is right. Um, there are no upper bounds defined in the uh, medicine industry when it comes to uh, genomics, when it comes to biotech companies. I mean, if you're talking about those legacy type of uh, industries in the pharma where you have like pills for headache and stuff like that, we're not really talking about that. We're talking more about... Uh, you know, genomics, we're talking about disease prevention, curing disease, but also disease prevention. We're talking about improving health and a one or two time dosage type of approach. Uh, similar to what we've seen with the pandemic where you had two, three, four doses across the board there. Uh, something along those lines with the mRNA technology, but obviously this is completely different when it comes to genome editing and when it comes to CRISPR, for example. And when it comes to specific diseases, like Chamat mentioned here, there are so many diseases that it's really just one, literally one uh, mutation in the gene that really is causing uh, a specific set of disease, right? And I think if we have tools available today, such as CRISPR, it's going to be a huge embarrassment for humanity if we don't explore that venue, right? And that's exactly why we have these companies like CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, Verve, Caribou, and TLA, and so on, right? Working on this. Now, whether or not it's CRISPR Generation 1, CRISPR Generation 2, CRISPR Generation 3 with prime editors, I think that's beside the point. The point here is that you have a potential trillion dollar plus market cap. For uh, Honestly, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I've i said this boldly. Like I remember during the bull run uh, in 2021, I've always said that CRISPR companies such as CRISPR Therapeutics NTLA, Beam Therapeutics, Caribou, uh, you know, Verve even, all of them would be worth a trillion dollars market cap within the next few years. I, I truly believe they combine, of course, sometime I combine. And of course, individually, at some point, they're going to be worth over, you know, if, if but even if you don't go that far, right, if you just take, take, take a guess, you know, a trillion dollars market cap, there's about less than 10 CRISPR companies that you can take seriously in the NASDAQ, right, in the public markets in the US. Based on that, some of them are gonna be worth more than $100 billion market cap, right? In a time where Amazon is less, less worth less than a trillion dollars and uh, 
Tesla is worth like less than eight, seven hundred billion. Uh, Meta is down, dropped down to five hundred, four hundred billion dollars. I mean, in those times, I'm making the prediction that in the next two, three years, one of these CRISPR companies are, is going to be worth more than fifty billion dollars market cap, and I would argue this may be very possible. One of them reaches hundred, hundred billion. Now, the whole one trillion, like the title here suggests, is for me to talk about the combined, right? And we know that by 2026, the big IDS 2022 report from ARK Invest, they expected that genome editing, which includes CRISPR, will be all worth about one point, I think it was one point three, one point two trillion dollars market cap. So, you know, estimating that these CRISPR companies all together will be worth all trillion dollars market cap by the next few years is not really that much of a bold like it is bullish but it's not really extreme bullish right um i think extreme bullish would be someone saying that you know crispr therapeutics wants to get fda approved hopefully they get fda approved or ntla uh one of them will be worth more than 500 billion dollars market cap by 2026 i think that's ridiculous to to, to say that because that's extremely bullish um but saying 100 billion i think that's possible i really think so i think that's a uh, I mean, just a year ago, you would say that's a 10x, right? And and I'm talking like 2026, 2027, 2028. I'm talking a few years, right? So I don't see why not. By then, we'll have a lot more CRISPR programs. We'll have FDA-approved programs. We'll have commercialization on full going ongoing. And of course, the CRISPR technology will be funded a lot more by governments around the world, right? But I really love this episode here from uh, Chamat here, this little clip from his interview with Lex. I think there's some value here. So shout out to Alec for tweeting that out. It got my attention. I was gonna continue the episode later tonight, but uh, the fact that he was able to tweet that uh, got us some good content for tonight. So hopefully you guys appreciate this. Do like this video if I'm value, guys. Subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you guys in the next video on a beautiful Thursday. Thank you.